Monarch Butterflies in Missouri The monarch butterfly is one of the most familiar species of butterfly in North America, perhaps one of the only species of butterfly every Missourian knows by name. It's characterized by its distinct black and orange markings. Today's presentation will contain a little bit about monarch butterflies' migration, the life cycle of the monarch, and some threats facing them right now, and what we can do to help. Monarch butterflies are a migratory species, meaning they can't be found in Missouri year-round. They're actually one of the only species of butterfly to make a two-way migration like birds. Their migration is multi-generational, and even spans across three countries. From November to March, monarchs lay dormant in their overwintering grounds found in Mexico. In early spring, these monarchs began their trek north, reaching the southern United States where they lay eggs on available milkweed. Offspring from the overwintering generation continue their trek north, and an additional two to three breeding generations are seen. Some monarchs even make it as far as southern regions of Canada. Starting in, in mid-August, these monarchs from throughout the northern breeding range begin their southward migration to Mexico, reaching overwintering sites in early November. The Monarch Butterfly's Life Cycle Monarch butterflies go through four stages during one life cycle, and they can have up to four generations in one year, as mentioned on the earlier slide. Monarchs lay their eggs on milkweed. Those eggs then hatch into worm-like larvae, or would otherwise be known as caterpillars. These caterpillars then consume the milkweed they were laid on, and eventually transform into a chrysalis. And from this chrysalis it emerges a butterfly, which then will continue the life cycle. The monarch butterfly egg, only about two to five caterpillars will eventually hatch from the hundreds of eggs that a female butterfly can lay. Some eggs die naturally, some are eaten by predators, and some are killed by parasites or bacterial infections. Monarch caterpillars look different as they molt and grow. Does anyone know what an instar is? An instar is a period between larval molts. Monarchs have five instars. Each instar lasts about two to three days. Each new instar grows and expands until the outer skin splits and the head capsule falls off, and a new larva is able to crawl out of its skin. This is called molting. Monarch larvae are eating machines, growing up to 2,000 times their original mass. Monarch larvae are hard to spot when they first hatch, smaller than your pinky nail. They look like little gray worms on a leaf. First and second instar caterpillars have a distinct eating pattern. They will choose small holes or crescent shapes into the leaf, which can often be the first indicator that a milkweed plant is hosting monarch larvae. Notice as they move from one instar to the next, the striping pattern and tentacles that develop. Fifth instar larvae are the largest and last larval stage, measuring 25 to 45 millimeters. They are easy to spot on a milkweed plant. When eating, they will notch on the stem of the leaf to prevent the milkweed sap from flowing and then eat from the tip of the leaf back to the stem. Fifth instars move much faster and further from the other stages. They can travel as far as three meters away from the plant they were feeding on to find a place to pupate. When a monarch larva is ready to form a chrysalis or pupa, it crawls several meters away from the plant it was eating to find a sheltered area. It then spins a silk button with a spinneret located beneath its mandibles or jaws. Once the button is spun, it turns back around and hangs upside down from its abdomen for 12 to 18 hours. When ready, the larva molts one last time, skin splitting at the back of its head slash neck area. Once this starts, it only takes about one minute for the molt to finish. Molting of the final larva stage is also called pupitation. The shiny green chrysalis below is still soft. Within 30 minutes, the chrysalis will reshape itself into what most people recognize as a monarch crystal. The casing will completely harden within the next 24 hours. 10 to 14 days after pupitation, the pigment of the adult butterfly begins to show through the transparent casing of the chrysalis. Pigment is the last thing to form before a monarch is ready to emerge or close from the chrysalis. It takes about five minutes for a monarch to open up the casing and make its way out and start 
pumping fluid into its wings. The wings will look small and deformed at first, but the monarch will soon pump its, ab pump its abdomen, releasing liquid into the wings, making them expand to their full size. The adult will hang upside down for four to five hours after it emerges to let its wings dry and harden into their shape. The adult is still very fragile for the first 24 to 48 hours after emerging, but they can fly as soon as their wings are dry. Male and female adult monarchs look different. Does anyone know how to tell the difference? Males have a spot on each hind wing called an androconial patch. In monarchs, they serve no purpose, but in other species of butterfly, they would produce and release pheromones. Females are a slightly duller orange and have thicker veins on their wings than males. Non-migratory adults sleep two to six weeks after they emerge from their chrysalis. During this time, they were mate will mate, and in the case of a female, lay eggs. Both sexes need nectar sources to survive. When's the last time you saw a monarch butterfly? How many monarch butterflies did you see? If you haven't seen monarch butterflies in abundance during the spring or summer, there's a reason. Monarch butterflies' populations are in decline, as indicated by the graph below. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services is set to decide in December 2020 if the monarch butterfly will be classified as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act. Threats to monarch populations. Why are monarchs in decline? One leading factor to monarchs' decline is habitat loss. They're losing their overwintering grounds in Mexico due to deforestation because of illegal logging. They're also losing their breeding grounds in the United States due to milkweed and native plant populations being in decline. These plant populations are in decline because of development, particularly around monarch breeding grounds, as well as increased use of herbicide tolerant crops and increased use of herbicide. Habitat loss, while a leading cause for monarchs decline, it isn't the only. Insecticides, climate change, invasive species, disease, and natural predators are all also leading to monarchs' decline. For example, an invasive species known as a swallowwort acts as a sink for monarch butterflies. Female monar monarchs will lay their eggs on this plant as it appears like a milkweed, but the caterpillars can't eat the plant, meaning that all offspring from female butterflies that lay their eggs on this plant won't survive. So what can you do to help monarch butterflies? Because habitat loss is one of the biggest factors for monarch populations decline, one of the biggest things you can do to help monarchs is plant milkweed and native nectar plants to help restore their natural habitat. Some considerations before planting. Location. Where are you planting? How dry is the soil? What's the sun like? Do the plants you want to plant fit the area? Habitat size and garden size. How much room do you have? Abundance of milkweed and diversity of milkweed. Monarchwatch.org actually recommends planting an abundance of milkweed plants and at least two different species to give monarchs a choice. And then also, are you considering planting some other native host plants for some of your native non-migratory butterfly species? So, some gardening tips. Choose a site with good sun. Choose plants that bloom throughout the entire season to ensure monarchs and other pollinators always have an available food source. Plant in clumps as densely planted areas are a place of comfort for monarchs and many other pollinators. Uh, choose plants of differing heights. Brushes can help reduce wind and provide a place for butterflies to shelter. And then accept some damage to plants, pollinators, and other insects need to eat too. And then for pest controls, encourage beneficial insects such as spiders. And then consider registering your garden as a monarch way station or part of the Million Pollinator Garden Challenge. A quick Google search will tell you how to register and some of the requirements for registering for either of those. Other ways to get involved. There are a ton of different ways to get involved beyond just planting native milkweed and nectar plants. Uh, citizen science is one way, which is any organized project involving students, teachers, or the general public in scientific research. So the journey north, 
Monarch Larva Monitoring Project, Monarch Health, and Monarch Watch are all programs that anyone can contribute data to. The Journey North has volunteers report sightings of their first adult monarch in the spring, the first milkweeds they see sprouting, and monarch roosts at night. MLMP volunteers monitor a milkweed patch throughout the entire season for monarchs and report back how many eggs and larvae they find. Monarch Health studies disease in monarchs, and they have their volunteers send them samples from the admins of adult monarchs to test for disease. Monarch Watch in the spring and fall recruits people to help tag monarchs. And then some other avenues, you can also look and see what your local conservation center or local schools are doing um, to help with monarchs. Chances are there may be a program in your area that you can also get involved with. And then finally, one of the biggest things you can do to help monarch populations is spread the word. You never know who may lend a helping hand.